we have come to the final episode in our series. We're calling Bree's Greatest Hits. This is the True. bonus episode. We were only going to do four of these. And then Bree's like, I can't pick four. Here's five. We can narrow it down. And I said, no, we're not. We're doing all five of them. <laughs> this was a real Sophie's choice. Like I, there's at least three or four others that I could have been like, Yes, you, these are must listens yeah. because they're amazing and hilarious. <laughs> I always think I have favorites and then I go back and look through all the episodes and I'm like, I can't pick. There's You can't. There's so many funny there's ones. There's some that I'm like, okay, yeah, that one's not airing again. <laughs> I'm sure you can think of which ones I'm talking about. But Looking um, at you, Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> trick, trick. Can I just, I'm just going to address this right now because I, I have ridden off into the sunset by this point and I just want to talk about how traumatizing that was. I had no, listen, I had no business. I had 0% business addressing that topic like two months in. It wasn't even, I think that was our fourth episode. I don't even think it was the fourth. I feel like it was my first one ever. I think it, I feel it was like very early. It we was had, so early. We had and the, no idea what we were doing. And I, like the Facebook group was still new and like the backlash and I was, I remember we were in Chicago. We were, we, were we there for a, we were maybe there for a wedding or something. And oh, I just man. remember like, the Facebook blowing up and I still felt like I had to be polite and address everybody. And yeah. meanwhile, I'm like sobbing in a hotel room somewhere <laughs> because people can't handle a nuanced topic like that. But I mean, it was a good formative experience, I guess. But It was episode five. Oh my God. <laughs> it was the first Breeze Big Question. Trick yes. Or episode five. Yes. <laughs> Disgusting. The, the <laughs> response was disgusting. Oh, maybe we should revisit that and see what maybe happens. Maybe we should and be mindful that it's not in the Bible. <laughs> but anyway. But that's me. You you know what? You gave me a microphone, so I got no one else in here. It's just you and me. I know. So I just thought I'd clear the air on that one. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. So anyway. Anyway. <laughs> what are we doing today? Okay, so I knew that I wanted to air this episode again. Yes. It's an all hands on deck. I tried to get an episode that each one of you did. And this yeah. is a, this was an all hands on deck. And we had the beautiful Katie Schuerman mm. in the studio. Yes. Who, and this, this episode started out as like a kernel of like, she had been on the show maybe a couple months earlier yeah. to talk about, it was a, it was a conversations, conversations with creatives, with creatives yep. and she was talking about her Anthems of Zion series, mm -hmm. which I had read at that point and loved it and thought it was great. Check it out if you haven't already. It's the best. And there, there was somebody said something about an April Fool's episode yeah. or something in that in that first with that conversations with creatives episode. There's just this tiny little seed. And then Katie delivered. Yes. Honestly, she wrote a script for us and the rest of us delivered too because we were playing two different characters uh -huh. and like on top of that like as as the people that we actually are, like we had to come up with these like absurd answers and so like <laughs> I'm really like this is this episode is like exemplifies the creative genius that is just resides in this studio when we're all in the room like it's it's palpable and you like the average person might not be able to handle it without like going into cardiac arrest like it's that potent so what we have for you today as the bonus episode mm. is our april fools episode with our sisters in christ in Bradbury, Illinois, <laughs> um, and us with Katie Schuerman, the April Fool's episode. There's really not, you just have to listen to it. Um, mm -hmm. It's hilarious. Grab a tissue, prepare to barf everywhere. Like it's hilarious. If you're driving, you may want to pull over. You will end up in a ditch. We, like you will. I previewed this episode with my husband before it aired and he nearly ran off the road. He was laughing so hard. True so, story. Safety first. Safety <laughs> first, <crash>. everyone. <laughs> Buckle up. Turn around. Don't drown. 
Thank you. It's been real, Brie. It has been real. And you know what? I am not too far away. If you need me for anything, well, I'm let around. You know. let, let, just let me know. Just Give you a call know. or a text because we don't call people. True story. Because we're millennials. I don't answer the phone. <laughs> All right. Here we go. All right. Bye. You're listening to the Lutheran Ladies Aid Brigade, a podcast of the Quilting Circle of Zion Lutheran Church in Bradbury, Illinois. I'm Rebecca. I'm Mrs. Scheinberg. I'm Bev. And I'm Candace. Candace Bradbury, of course, wife of Thomas Edison Bradbury III, fourth generation descendant of Thomas Bradbury the first, the namesake and founder of our illustrious town. And we already know, Candace, <laughs> you gave the same intro last time. Well, it would be an egregious abuse of our programming if I didn't inform new listeners about the history of our town. You may not care about Bradbury, Arlene, but... At Bradbury's been my address longer than it's been your name. I've cared about this town longer than you've been alive. If anyone... If anyone remembers, we've not yet finished introductions. It's Nettie's turn. Go ahead, Nettie. Go. Uh, are we done already? Uh, n- no, it's your turn to introduce yourself. Uh, oh, 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 yes. Hello, sweetheart. It's your turn to introduce yourself to everyone. Hello, everyone. No, no, Nettie, um, like how I did and then Arlene did and everyone else did. When it's your turn, you just lean into the microphone and say, I'm Nettie, which, of course, I'm not. But that's what you say if you are. And then everyone listening knows who you are when you're speaking and can picture your face when they hear your voice, even though they can't see you. And now that I come to think of it, they probably don't know how to picture you since they've never seen you. So... Maybe we should take a moment and describe to everyone what we're wearing so that we just could... say your name, Nettie. What? Your name. What's your name? Annette Marie Schmidt. And I am wearing clothes today. Perfect. Thank you, Nettie. Moving on. Yes, moving on. We're so glad you've joined us today for our discussion of all the latest trills, frills, and gills hitting sewing circles across the central Illinois district. Did you say gills? Why, yes, Bev, I most certainly did say gills, because we talk about more than just thimbles and thread on this podcast, and we have some very special guests joining us today all the way from the river town of St. Louis, Missouri, to talk about how fish can be featured on the potluck table even in the middle of a cornfield like ours. Nettie, would you like to introduce our guests? Oh, yes. Dear listeners, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, and I'm pickled to be in the parish hall this morning with four fishy women. They are the hosts of my favorite podcast, The Lutheran Ladies Lingerie. Lounge, Nettie. What? What's that? Lutheran Ladies Lingerie. Lounge. Yes, please. Welcome all the way from the St. Louis Ark, Sarah, Aaron, Bree, and Rachel. Hey, hey ladies. What's going on? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Pork is pig, beef is cow, and lamb, lamb is La- lamb? Is that right, Rebecca? Yes. Lamb is lamb. Am I reading that correctly? Yes. Mm-hmm. I am. Oh, okay, honey. <laughs> yes. These three animals we know and eat well here in Bradbury, but fish is on the table today. And so I'd like to ask you ladies first, where do city girls like you cast their nets to catch a good fish for supper? Well, Nettie, one might think that the Mississippi is a reliable source of river fish. I only went once, though, and gave up after a couple of hours when, by that point, I had caught nothing but an old tire, three (laughs) empty two-liter bottles of Fresca, a human toe, and the entire passenger side door of a Chevy Aveo. Oh, yummy. Mm Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> How about you, Sarah? <laughs> My adventures are not nearly that exciting at all. I generally go to the very exotic Trader Joe's up the street <laughs> to get my fish from the freezer section. That's so fair. is is he a local? <laughs> very local. Very local. Okay. Yes. Also, we're planning on putting some aquaponics in our backyard at some point in our new house, so I'll be able to catch fish right in my own backyard. Is huh. is that one of those Crayola crayons? A- aquaponics? Yes. It's my favorite color. <laughs> My favorite color is yellow. Oh, me too. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Nettie, I feel like we're the same person sometimes. <laughs> I think it could be true, Brie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am intrigued by the toe that you found in the river. <laughs> and I'm curious, do you find, do you find that worms, grubs, crickets, or, or cats make the best bait actually it's a little known fact carp love country fried steak oh huh okay i'm not a huge fan of carp i like i would rather keep the country fried steak and leave the carp where they are (laughs) however (laughs) i would have to say that the best bait for me if you're going to catch edible fish is night crawlers (laughs) dug from the north side of the compost heap after a light rain and under a new moon that would be my uh, go-to go-to formula. This there. is totally unsurprising that <laughs> yeah. that is your approach. <laughs> oddly specific, dude. As oddly specific. <laughs> I personally like to make my own bait, and the way I do it is I take a hot dog and about an equal amount of peanut butter and put that in the food processor. What? And just grind it up into a paste because. Catfish love really smelly bait. Actually, yeah. Add a little uh, beef liver to that and you will be good to go. Yeah. This is also an unsurprising answer. (laughs) (laughs) So then I just take a tub of that and, you know, smear it on my my hook. I maybe sometimes use like one of those little dangly rubber things and just add a little bit of my special paste. So you don't just go in there barefoot and noodle for them? (laughs) Not with human toes, also. <laughs> sort of keep my toes. Erin does of not that hand river. fish. She doesn't do that. She doesn't do that. No. She, she likes a good sh- paste schmear. Yes. Uh, yes. Erin's special paste. Mm-hmm. TM. Like that's going to be a recipe card. <laughs> so, I, for one, just set my kitties loose and they'll go find the fish for me and bring them back. And Mm. if I'm lucky, I'll actually be able to eat some. Unpaid labor is the best. Mm. Especially kitty. Kitty labor. labor. Mm -hmm. They're the cutest. My grandfather always held a roll in his left hand when he ate fish. He said it was to chase the bones down his throat after each bite. But if you eat shrimp, bones aren't an issue. Now, my Harold was allergic to seafood, so I never served it. But do you ladies prefer to serve seafood or fish in your own homes? Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, my husband's a Navy man, and we love the ocean very much, especially the edible parts of the ocean. Mm. So, yeah, whenever we can afford it, with four kids and inflation being what it is, <laughs> we are very happy to serve any kind of seafood. Although I sometimes have to look to Aaron to provide me some guidance on how to cook it. (laughs) Well, and I personally living in Missouri, I'm far from the ocean. And so I love I love seafood and fish and shellfish. Mm. But I just don't eat a lot of it here because I don't know. I have a bit of a suspicion about (laughs) fish that has to travel so far to get to me. So I personally am a big fan of of canned seafood it's true it's so true i buy canned sardines by the case oh yes and they're delicious (laughs) yes (laughs) they're delicious straight out of the can sometimes i add a little hot sauce cholula uh you can put them like (laughs) make up a little pasta and then just dump in a can of sardines and you've got an instant tasty pasta sauce Uh there's also a very tasty 
like mackerel pate. I've tried Ooh, that. Oh, very tasty. delicious. Comes out of a can as well. And, you know, smoked oysters, smoked mussels, all sorts of canned seafood is what I'm currently a big fan of. I would like to try a sardine on one of those what did you call it, Aaron? The, the hot dog with the peanut butter on top? Mm, <laughs> special taste. Yes. <laughs> that would lure in uh, quite, quite the catch, I think. Yes. It does. I caught my husband that way. <laughs> <laughs> we could put it on a Ritz cracker and call it Bradbury Pate. <laughs> <laughs> we could do that. That's a business enterprise waiting to happen, though. I, I hear you are a champion fisherwoman. That's right. Tell us about your big win last year at the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain. Well, I'm sorry. This is going to get a little personal, so oh, bear with me. Okay. I come from a long line of sea fishermen. A lot of people don't know this. Um, but my great, great, great grandfather was Buford Gorton, distant relative of the trusted Gorton's Fisherman TM. Wow. And was, was he married to Charlotte? Yes. <gasps> yes. <gasps> Charlotte. Charlotte is my great, great, great aunt. I knew we were related. <laughs> that explains so much to me, Bree. Oh, my gosh. Well, wow. I'm learning so many things today. My parents, <laughs> my parents tried to train me in the way that I should go. Aka, saltwater fishing. <laughs> but I knew there was more to life than catching fish sticks in the cold waters of the North Atlantic. So I, I knew I knew what my calling was. It was in freshwater fishing. Uh -huh. I came out to my parents when I was 14. They were horrified to know I was interested in freshwater, and they immediately disavowed my very existence. Wow. Wow. And the pain and hurt that it caused me only fueled the deep, passionate fires of freshwater fishing in my soul. Hmm. Last year's contest was unlike any other except I also suffer from performance amnesia, so I can't guarantee that. <laughs> I will say, I will say, I always place my winning catch in a cardboard box and mail it to my parents <laughs> with a note that says, ha ha, suckers. And I'm guessing you don't send it overnight. With the COVID-related <laughs> supply chain issues, labor shortages, and U.S. Postal Service delays, uh. I bet last year's package was super <laughs> rotten by the time. How considerate of you, Brie. Uh. Yes, I know. We oh, love you, Mom you. and Dad. <laughs> and you know, I think it shows your sensibility because we all know that it's better to drink fresh water over salt water. Amen to that. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for saying that. Yeah. It was very affirming. Rachel. Yes, ma'am. Rachel. My grandson wants to meet you because he is a huge fan of your latest book, Something Fishy This Way Smells. And he says that it's a real page turner. And, and he loves how this thriller is set in pure Michigan instead of that that usual stinky New Orleans. <laughs> now, tell us, how did you come to decide to move your protagonist from the Gulf to the lake in this new book? Well, first off, love to your grandson. Really appreciate him out there. As for why we went from New Orleans to Michigan, I should think that that's obvious. Climate change. <laughs> Everything oh. is moving north these days. That's true. Ticks, <laughs> venomous snakes. Armadillos. 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 Tourists. Chicagoans. <laughs> <laughs> I am just... Trying to stay ahead of the trend. That's all. Would you say then that you are a trendsetter for Michigan? On my good days, yes. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge, huge fan of pure Michigan. In fact, if I had my choice of living imaginatively in New Orleans or pure Michigan, that was a, a really fairly easy choice to make. No, I appreciate Michigan the question. Influencer. It was a really great question. Michigan influencer. Michigan. You have any little tidbits you could give us about what you're working on right now? 
I'm afraid that is really confidential. I find that it really interrupts my creative process. If anybody is aware of a project before it's completely done, that like, if I, I if I told you about it, I'd never finish it. And that would be as far as it went. I often feel that way before I cook supper. Mm -hmm. People ask me, what are you making tonight? And I don't even tell myself. Yeah, you know, that because is the way to do it. I, I do better when I'm in the zone. Mm. Yeah, creativity mm -hmm. is like a very shy woodland creature. If you draw too much attention to it, it's gone. Yep. Exactly. My my inner creative self is a squirrel. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I can totally see that. Yeah. Uh -huh. totally. You are just like Brie. <laughs> yep. <laughs> wow. Yep. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Aaron. I, I have to admit that I, I watch your cooking show on PBS every week. I, I just can't wait for a new episode of Potholes and Potlucks. And my, my favorite episode is the one where you visit that church near Hoover Hill, Missouri, and, and you bring your great aunt's secret hot dish to share. I, I, I believe you call it fishtails and entrails. Can you tell us a little bit about how she makes it? I would be so pleased to do so. <laughs> Great Aunt B. She grew up in the Memphis area and they did not have a lot of money. So maybe that's partly how I came to my love of canned food, canned ah. seafood. So this recipe, it it is just one of those that really does look exactly like what the title is. Oh, no. And yet it tastes amazing. Mm, so don't let so the, the very literal looks put you off. It's okay. like dogs okay. return to their own vomit. Exactly. <laughs> hmm. Well, that's uh, that that would be one. I'm going to move right along. <laughs> that's a great <laughs> metaphor for people going up for seconds at the potluck. Yeah, I love that. Right. Did you come up with that yourself? <laughs> mm. I am in the zone. <laughs> she is. She's going hard in the pain, guys. Go, okay, so the way you make this recipe, you take eight ounce, an eight ounce package of softened cream cheese. Combine that with a can of cream of mushroom soup. This is the classic starting point with everything. Add about a cup of milk. Just add, fill up the can most of the way with some milk. You're going to mix that together well to make a really nice creamy base. Mm -hmm. Then you add a half a cup of onion chopped finely, a half a cup of celery chopped finely, one package of frozen green peas. You don't need to worry about thawing them. Just dump them in cold. One can of sliced mushrooms drained. Mm. Okay. One small jar of sliced green olives that you're going to chop up hmm. roughly, roughly chopped. They don't need to be finely chopped. You want to see some nice chunks of green in there. And if they've got pimento, that's fine, too. Christmas. Okay. All right. Then two seven ounce cans of regular tuna, just the cheap stuff. Okay. Uh. Drain that, flake it well, mm. mix that into the mix. Two cups of cheddar cheese, Ooh, shredded. Of course. A tablespoon of prepared mustard, one teaspoon of garlic powder, mm -hmm. some salt to taste. Okay. Mix all of that well. Then, oh, also a few shakes of red pepper flakes. Of I course. like to do that. I mean, maybe some people I'm don't like the spice. spice, but I like a little, <laughs> a little spice. on the wild side. That's, that's, yeah, our yeah. So a few shakes of some red pepper flakes. Then, once you've got that mixture all well combined, you're going to add about 12 ounces of angel hair pasta. Uh -huh. Okay. Ooh. Already cooked. Okay. Okay. I thought Not macaroni. Pasta. This is fishtails and entrails, remember. Uh -huh. So, angel I hair. I can yes. see it. Yes. You can picture it, right? Okay. So, mix that in. Add that. Oh, wait, wait. I forgot. Okay, then also add one seven ounce can of the nice tuna. Okay, there's ah. three cans of tuna in this, two of the cheap, one of that chunk white albacore. Mm. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the best stuff. add that in at the end though and mix it in gently so that you have some nice chunks of tuna. Okay, ah, people will Don't think you're classy. Curious. I love it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> add that to your casserole dish and then top it with about a cup and a half of very lightly broken 
ridged potato chips. Oh. The ridges are important. Remember the fish tails? <gasps> yeah. These are your fish tails. So you're going to Exactly. Okay? So you're going to put that on top, pop it in your oven, bake it for about I don't know, 20 to 25 minutes or so at 375. It should be bubbling and the chips should be a little bit golden in places and it's ready to go. Mm. It's going to look horrifying, but it's going to taste delicious. That sounds amazing. Mm. I love it. I need that. I'm yeah. curious about uh, your trader friend, uh, Joe. Joe, mm -hmm. can he get these supplies for you in that river city you live in? I'll have to say, I personally boycott Trader Joe's. <laughs> I feel it is too popular. So he is too popular. I, <laughs> both he and his his premises. Yes, <laughs> he they do not deserve my business. So I prefer <laughs> to shop at smaller locations. However, I suspect that Trader Joe's is going to offer some sort of a canned tuna, peas, yep. and pasta. You could totally yeah. do this at Trader yeah. Joe's. Yeah. He we use it. we use an IGA in Bradbury. Mm -hmm. Is that is that okay? I believe so. You could substitute another pasta. If you don't have angel hair, I think just spaghetti would be fine. I would be hesitant to go with a linguine. That's going to start mm. losing some of the impact visually, yeah. I think. Mm. But spaghetti would still be a fine option if they don't have angel hair. Yeah, Nettie, I think it That's is just fine to shop at some place other than Trader Joe's. I boycott Trader Joe's for a different reason. I'll let you guess what it is. I will be shopping at either Aldi or Walmart for these ingredients. <laughs> you, you have Walmart out near Bradbury? We do in Hamburg. Okay. Yes. Yep. So and there. Costco. Oh, oh, Costco. Oh, whoa. You guys are moving. What? Up. Yes, but we, you you have to have a driver's license to go in mm. this. Th well, it's like a driver's license, but not for driving. <laughs> it's mm. a thing they look at and they sh you show it and then they say you can enter. Okay. Mm. And I, I, I do not. I tried to get one at the DMV and they, they did not mm. have them. So I, I cannot go to Costco. <sighs> I, I go to the IGA. Mm. Mm. <sighs> okay. Nothing wrong with that. I, I'm nope. just really thankful to have such good healthy delicious smelling fish with chips yeah mm -hmm. thank you yes. Aaron. yes you're mm. welcome delicious sarah honey you you teach me so much about hymns and hums on the lutheran ladies luge i was wondering before you all have to bid us a chew would you please sing for me a little song that my young friend George Fletcher wrote about fish. Yes, here here are the words on this paper here. Oh, okay, wow. uh, he told me that the words fit perfectly to the tune uh, "Ein Festive Burger." <clears throat> mm -hmm. Do you know that one? Oh yeah, it's ein, ein Feste Burg. It's unfortunately not about hamburgers. Oh, it is from the Reformation. From oh. a long, long time ago, oh. from Martin Luther. Oh, then it is, it is good. It is mm. good. <laughs> and, you know, there's actually two different versions of this tune. There's Luther's original rhythmic version, and then there's the isometric one that showed up later in the 1600s because congregational singing had slowed down so much that the original tune from Martin Luther was like a funeral dirge. It was so slow. So they, they pepped it up a little bit. And that's the one that J.S. Bach has his famous mm. setting of in, in chorale tunes. So I won't tell you which one is my favorite because I don't want to start any wars about which hymn tune is the best one. I might agree with you. Uh, Whatever, haters. <laughs> We have split opinions on this podcast about 656 versus 657. So I'll just leave it there. But yes, so here is George Fletcher's text to the original Martin Luther tune. A fish has gills and breathes in a lake. It flips and flops on land and on sand. Mm. At last it stills, it's ready to bake. It slips and slops around in my hand. Take butter, lemon, and salt. When the bell dings, halt! <laughs> the fish is all done. Then serve it with a bun. 
And that's how you make supper. Nice. (laughs) You sing like a catfish, all smooth and wet and whiskery. Now, now, ladies, before we say goodbye, uh, Rebecca, Rebecca. Yeah. yeah. uh, uh, Yes. may, May I ask one more question? Oh, sure. It's not. It's not written down. Is that okay? That's okay. Okay. Um, it's it's just a small one. Um, it's something I've been wondering about ever since I first heard these talented ladies talk on the Lutheran Ladies Log. It's okay to ask. Yeah, it's yes. okay. Okay. Um, thank you, Rebecca. You're <laughs> welcome. <laughs> okay, Bree. Bree. Yes. Yes, I'm here. Hi. <laughs> My mother named me after a prophetess and the mother of our Lord. Mm. Why did your parents name you after a cheese? <laughs> it's actually a very interesting story. On February 28, 1986, my mom went into labor in the deli aisle <laughs> at the Stop and Shop in Shelton, Connecticut. Stop and Shop! And- <laughs> I understand she- so much more now. Yeah, right. <laughs> she was going to name me after her favorite cheese it's a portuguese sheep and goat's milk cheese and it's called amahelo jibeha baisha oh wow amahelo amahelo jibeha baisha exactly <laughs> but it wouldn't fit all on the birth certificate oh. so she, she went with the next best thing and that was Brie. I hope that helps. What if what what if that had been your name? What would your name be now? Now that you're married, I'll like lay it all out there for us. Do you want to time it and see how long it takes to say it? <laughs> I don't, yeah. <laughs> okay. Tell me when to go. Go. I'm a halo G. Behabaisha Gerzevsky. That's about four seconds. Wow. It's impressive. It's a lot of letters. <laughs> that would not fit on my diploma. That's for sure. Especially if I put my maiden name on there. I wonder what it is timed when you say your name, Bree. Ready? I am. Bree. That's, I, I think that's around 0.10 seconds. That's not even a second. <laughs> yeah. You can save a lot of gas mileage with your name. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Well, you, you, Beautiful ladies, it is so nice to meet you, and I, I'm so glad you could come all the way to Bradbury today. I hope you have safe travels down the river back home. This was such Thanks, a treat. Thank you, Nettie. Nettie. Oh, my soul yeah. sister. Yes. Yes. Your it's real cousin. You, right, my for real cousin, maybe. I don't know what that would I don't shake even, out to. Lots of generations. This was really great and fun. <laughs> Yeah. You're very tasty, all of you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You too. <laughs> Bye, ladies. All right, Breadburyans. That was wonderful. Just wonderful. But now it is time for another letter to Dear Mrs. Scheinberg. Dear Mrs. Scheinberg, what mail has thou gotten? Thank you to everyone who submitted letters to Mrs. Scheinberg this month. Mary Hoff, as usual, keeps your letters under lock and key in an undisclosed filing cabinet drawer in the church office. And, as usual, we blindfolded Arlene and had her pull one letter out from the drawer. The chosen letter read. Are you ready for this, Arlene? Yes. Dear Mrs. Scheinberg, I'm not sure what to do. Every time I post a picture on Facebook of my children... My cousin makes some kind of comment on the picture about how I need to get the COVID vaccine for the sake of my children. Literally, on every picture. How do I keep my cousin from turning my Facebook posts into political rallies? Sincerely, Liber Contrarian. Well, there you go. Dear Liber Contrarian, get off Facebook. That's it? That's it. You have nothing more to say. What more is there to say? Oh, there are lots of things to say, like maybe your cousin just needs a hug, or maybe you could thank the cousin for her advice and keep scrolling. Or maybe the liberal contrarian person could ask the cousin over for tea and have a heart-to-heart, you know, talk all their differences. Oh, I know. 
Whenever anyone asks Serve about the vaccine, he always says, my body, my choice. That would be good. Women love to hear that. <sighs> or maybe they would Bev, say. Bev, did you hear about that one woman who changed her vote in the last presidential election because of a Facebook post she read? Oh. Or what about that other woman whose daughter was cured from cancer because she took the dietary advice of someone commenting on her profile picture? Really? No. No. Me neither. Everyone should simply get off Facebook and Instagram and Snap, Crackle, Pop Chat or whatever else. Uh, Thank you, Mrs. Scheinberg. How about we just go ahead and read another letter? But I haven't prepared a response for another letter. None of us doubts your ability in this matter, Arlene. Your words fly like butterflies. I was thinking sting like bees. Or wasps. Most definitely wasps. Here, Here's another letter, Mrs. Scheinberg. I'm sure our listeners would appreciate your thoughts, however on the fly. A butterfly. Yes, Nettie, thank you. Okay, Dear Mrs. Scheinberg, my cinnamon rolls aren't as fluffy as yours. I follow your recipe exactly as you wrote it down for me, but they are never light and airy like yours. What am I doing wrong? Sincerely, Hard Cross Buns. Oh, well, that's easy. Dear Hard Cross Buns, buy new leaven. Really? That's it? Candace. The letter says, Dear Mrs. Scheinberg, not Dear Queen of Bradbury, but please go ahead. Add your two cents if you think you can... I would like to point out that you always have plenty to say whenever it's to me. I'm just suggesting that our listeners might appreciate it if you applied the same energy to... For the love of clarity, Candace. The woman wrote that she's following my recipe, so she's not doing anything wrong. It must be the quality of her ingredients. And since sugar and flour rarely go bad, and even if the butter went bad, that would affect the flavor, not the rise. So it must be the leaven. The lady should buy a new leaven. That's that. Thank you, Mrs. Scheinberg. That is helpful advice. I'm sure we can all agree. Okay, I think we'll move on to one of everyone's favorite segments, needles and noodles. Oh, honey, I I don't know, Rebecca. That vaccine letter caused some trouble. Uh, not not those kind of needles, Nettie. Sewing needles. Oh. Oh. Needles, noodles, needles, noodles. As you all know, Candace Bradbury is not only a master seamstress in the quilting circle here at Zion Lutheran Church, but she is revered in all of Bradbury County as an accomplished cook in the kitchen. In fact, we all fondly think of her as our local authority on everything hospitality. Do we, though? Candace, what tried and true party tips do you have for us this month? Well, since Easter is fast approaching... I thought it might be a good time to talk about the design of both your menu and your table setting for the big Resurrection Day. Of course, checkered pastels and bunnies and colored eggs are always in vogue this time of year. But why do what everyone expects? This is not your grandma's Easter. Actually, it is. What I'm saying is, if you want your Easter spread to look like more than just another sale aisle at Hobby Lobby... Make an Easter wreath centerpiece for your table. Wait, an Easter wreath? Yes! Similar to an Advent wreath, an Easter wreath is a circle comprised of seasonal cuttings. But instead of evergreen boughs, you can choose from whatever bush or tree is flowering in your yard. Yellow forsythia, pink red bud, or if you're lucky, blushing cherry blossoms. Arrange these bursts of color in a circle at the center of your table, and then in the middle of the flowering wreath, Rest your raised cake plate. Four inches from table shop is best. Display your lamb cake. But what if we don't have a lamb cake? Well, then I would ask, why are you hosting Easter dinner? (laughs) But I suppose there are some who may not have the proper cake tin, and so you could feature cupcakes or something equally colloquial and peasantish on the plate, if you must. I do like cupcakes, especially when the middle's been cut out to make room for some kind of creamy, ooey, gooey goodness like a cherry rhubarb compote or a salted caramel cream or a lemon curd or even a Reese's peanut butter cup. 
Oh, chocolate. I love chocolate. Arlene, do you remember that cupcake we bought at the Costco in Hamburg? That one I bit into and some kind of chocolate pudding ganache dream squooshed out onto my chin. And the frosting on that thing was as tall as that. Candace, what about a tablecloth? You recommend lavender colored, I presume. Well, no, it, it depends on the colors of your blooms, yes? A white or green cloth would be ideal for highlighting the yellows and pinks of the Easter wreath, I think. And white or green napkins to match? Oh, good heavens, no. Lavender, of course. Uh, okay, and what about the menu? Ah, uh, yes. Now, here we have some room for personal preference. Many of our cousins across the waters choose to roast a lamb for Easter. But I think a platter of ham on the table communicates a confidence in the gospel. And if a ham, then bone in, of course. Nothing beats the texture and flavor of one of Max Maurer's locally pastured hogs. I don't know what your definition of a pasture is, but... It would be an absolute shame to violate local farm-to-table fare with bits of pineapple and candied cherries. Save such juvenile confetti for lesser parties and lesser cuts of meat. So what sides would you pair with the ham? Well, food should be a feast for the eyes as well as the belly. And so we want to consider how our colors and textures and flavors all play together. The subtle rosé of a ham is beautiful with the crusty green of roasted Brussels sprouts and the silky, creamy white of mashed buttered potatoes. So, not sweet potatoes? This is Easter, Rebecca. Thanksgiving was last year. Uh, right. And for fruit? Jello salads are a favorite with children, of course, but those bold oranges and reds will trump the pale pink of the ham on the table. And we do not want to upstage the lamb cake, do we? No. No. No, no, no we do not. Save those jewel tones for the tiny jam jars passed behind your basket of oatmeal rolls and let a simple bowl, pale yellow, lemon chiffon pineapple salad appease the sweet tooth of every child at the table. Mm. But will the yellow distract from the lavender napkins? Oh, no. Purple goes with everything, dear. Aha. Well, thank you, Candace, for the expert May advice. I add one more thing? Uh, of course. While a table stacked with elegant, delicious fare is always a delight to the eyes, our middles don't look so elegant when stacked with the same. So, while those dirty dishes are soaking after the meal, get outside and take the entire family for a good, brisk 30-minute walk following your Easter feast. Remember, food is fuel in the end, and that fuel is better burned than stored. And for those of you looking for a more... Uh, shall we say, rigorous attack on the rear end this spring? Come by the candy box and ask for the Lutheran Ladies Aid Brigade Special. For the month of April, I am offering three private training sessions for the price of one to any woman who can show me a picture of her Candace Bradbury-inspired Easter wreath. Wow, that's a generous offer, Candace. Thank you for helping us keep more than just our tables beautiful this spring. You are so welcome. Is it finally time for my favorite segment? Yes, Mrs. Scheinberg. Why don't you go ahead and introduce Rev with Bev? Bev Davis, as we all know, is Bradbury's golden girl with a gift for the gab. Mm -hmm. And after 60 plus years of friendship, I'm on a quest to find... A subject, any subject, <laughs> that Bev has nothing to say about. Mm -hmm. So in this segment, I'm going to give Bev a prompt, and then Bev is going to try to talk about it if she can. Oh, boy. If I can. Rebecca's got a stopwatch in hand. Yes, I do. And if Bev can speak about the prompt for one full minute without faltering... <gasps> Then I'll take her to Colster's Kitchen tonight for fried chicken. My treat. Ooh. But if Bev runs out of things to say before the minute is up, Bev pays for her own chicken. All right. And just to be clear, Bev has no idea ahead of time what prompt you're going to give. None of you has any idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, last month it was concupiscence. And the month before that was... Uh, 
What was it? Uh, it, it was hemorrhoids. Uh, no, it, it was asteroids. Y- yes, that's right. Is the timer ready? Ready. Is the contestant ready? I think so. I guess so. I mean, I have no idea what to say since I don't really know what Arlene is going to say. And that makes me feel like a balloon without any... Ugh, uh, save your words, old girl. Uh, okay, ladies. On my mark, you'll say the prompt, Mrs. Scheinberg, and then I'll start the stopwatch. Get ready. Get set. Go. Bev, what do you know about Alexander Solzhenitsyn? Oh, my. Alexander, you said yes? Well, he was great, wasn't he? Alexander was great, if I remember correctly, though this is the first time I've heard his last name. Soldier sitting, you said? (laughs) How interesting. (laughs) Well, he must have served in the military with a name like that. No, his father must have served in the military. That's how surnames work, right? They come from the father's occupation or his town or valley or something like that, which makes me wonder about Earth's father, you know? Davis sounds like a first name, not a last name. And I've always wondered, who was the original Davis? Was he a shepherd, a baker, a captain? Maybe he was a writer of some kind. I mean, Irv's pretty poetic, and he must have gotten it from somewhere. That reminds me, did I ever tell you that Irv wrote me a poem when we were dating? Yes, he did. And he wrote it on the palm of my hand. It was so romantic, except I lost it, of course. I could only go so long without washing my hand after using the restroom. And Mother was wasn't going to suffer doing the supper dishes by herself that night, of course. I sure wish I'd thought to write it down on some paper first. I once asked Irv if he remembered what he wrote. And do you know what he told me? He told me that he remembered the poem for days, but then he forgot it the moment he first kissed me. Aww. He said that my kiss knocked everything that had come before right out of him. And he's been schnookered ever since. Aww. Really, he's gifted with words and rhymes. And, Times! Uh, <laughs> Up. Well, <laughs> Bev, it looks like I'm buying chicken tonight. Did I do it? Did I win? Oh, you won all right. And I was right about Alexander sits in soul food? Vaguely. <laughs> there, there was a moment. <laughs> Let's just say that my quest for a subject that silences Bev continues. Oh, nice job, Bev. And looking at this watch, uh, I'm realizing that we're near the end of our hour together on the Lutheran Ladies Aid Brigade. And you know what that means, ladies. Word Word association with the What? Word association with Nettie. No one in the world thinks quite like our beloved Nettie Schmidt. And so we like to end each podcast seeing the world through Nettie's beautiful eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay, Nettie, do you remember how to play word association? Mm -hmm. One of us says a word, and then you say the first thing that comes to mind. Brain. Uh, Not quite yet. Alphabet. Uh, Ladies, it looks like she's starting without us. Friends. Can it work that way? Play. And she's rhyming again. Shaking spear. I think she means Shakespeare. Rhyme. Should we stop her and start over? Clover. Just keep going. Tortoise. Hamburger. Goat. Goat. Ah. Hamburger. Amazing. Harold. No, I meant. Cupcake. Cheeks. Cemetery. Calling. Lat. Moonshine. Carillon. Mary. Red. Jesus. Twinkie Cake. Herod. Orange. Alice. Quail. Safe. Church. Family. Bradbury. Home. Oh, well, that sounds like as good a place as any to end. Resurrection Day. <laughs> She's still going. Incontinent. <laughs> Nettie, we've stopped. Constipated. <laughs> She's out of control. Dysentery. Is there any way to stop her? (laughs) Kegel. Uh, Okay. Okay. Could someone please help Nettie out of the room, (laughs) Bev? Come Uh, come on, Nettie. Thank you. Come come on. Okay. Thank you. Uh, No worries. I I can always edit this part out before the episode drops. Drawers! (laughs) And and we're done. We're done. God bless and keep all of you ladies listening out there. We hope our little podcast reminds you that though your small town may be shrinking by the hour and your church along with it, you are not alone. We, the women 
of the Zion Lutheran Church Ladies' Aid Society are sitting around a quilt, just like you, keeping the love alive in our community one stitch at a time. As our young pastor often says, what else is there in this life but to love God and take care of people? So, as you get busy taking care of your people today, we wish you a blessed Lent, a happy Holy Easter, and a fun, extraordinary, Bradbury-filled April April Day! Day! (laughs) Wake, awake, the Lutheran Lady Saint Brigade, wake! Wow. <laughs> you guys were phenomenal. That was the best. <laughs> okay, for all you <laughs> listeners out there, we just need to take a moment and like announce the fact that Katie Sherman is in the house. <laughs> wow. So this goes back to when we had you on our podcast for a real actual, like serious-ish episode, kind of. And we were <laughs> <Kind> like of. <laughs> Hey, it would be fun if we did something ridiculous for April Fool's Day. And you, Katie, were like, um, yes, I'm going to run with it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And And so here we are. And this is so fun. (laughs) Oh, you guys, your characterizations. I broke my character all the time because you guys were so good. Oh, the second Mrs. Scheimer opened her mouth. I I know, it was over. It was lights out when Aaron was like, I'm Mrs. Scheimer. And I'm telling you, Candace Bradbury, things could be so last. So last. Last Yes. 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 Mm. And can we just take a moment for our breath? Bev. Our Brev. Our Brev. Oh, that's Rev with Bev. Oh. <laughs> you were phenomenal. Thank you. Yes. And yeah. thank you, Sarah, for the touch of reality. Yeah, that was just exactly. You're welcome. Together. Exactly. And, and she always singing. does. Yeah. Like that's uh-huh. <sighs> singing a cappella. Yes. About fish. Uh, about fish. Sure, <laughs> Reformation tune. Yes. And there's a recipe in there. Let's uh, be honest. Oh, that yeah. recipe. That's- so Erin, did you totally make that up for this episode? Oh, I totally adapted a legit tuna casserole oh, recipe so from is, my mom. That is so perfect. I have never I had expected. a good tuna casserole oh. recipe, but that one I think I might do. I, I yeah. don't know <laughs> if I'd use spaghetti, though. <laughs> yeah, I I was half I expecting it to go day, completely though. sideways. Yeah. Like you're like add five scoops of some <laughs> like dog food or something. <laughs> oh. oh. Well, I do have to say, we were talking about this before the episode. Katie, you managed to make me say something via your wonderful script that I have never said uh, before. In fact, I am going against my own printed words in last year's Lutheran Witness Easter edition. Uh, So any ladies who, like me, serve lamb on Easter, please do not take Candace seriously. Either is fine. <laughs> Lamb for the Savior, ham for the gospel. If you want both together, great. My husband suggested wrapping our annual Easter lamb in bacon yesterday, and I'm not mm. thinking it's a terrible hey. idea. So <laughs> there you go. Show but business can make you say some crazy things. <laughs> the irony of it mix me up. No, I had not even realized, but that just that makes me happy. <laughs> really happy. <laughs> <laughs> and your presentation of Candace's whole diatribe was perfect. Yes. Yeah. yes. You know, you told yes. us that you would cast us in our opposite persona. However, that may not have been 100% accurate. <laughs> because <laughs> I maybe have a little bit of Candace in me. And I think Erin has more than a little bit of Arlene in her. Yes. <laughs> I, I actually, I think you aligned us yeah, all with yeah. who we would actually be. Yeah. Oh, oh, my word. Okay. Oh, for one well, thing, now I know you better. Now I forget to flip it up next alter time. Egos. Of the four of us, I am the most likely to use egregious in a sentence. So that part is perfectly <laughs> right. accurate. <laughs> and Sarah is the most likely to bring sanity to any conversation. So thank right. you, Sarah. Exactly. I just have to say, Sarah, you are such a good moderator. Mm. Like, oh, so I'm good. the Lutheran ladies lingerie as well. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite was Lutheran Ladies Luge. <laughs> <laughs> I just let it go. Uh-huh. 
I love it. Uh, thank you for having me on to do this. This was so fun. Oh, man. It's great. We are the never going to top this, you guys. It's just not going to happen. What? What we, how, how often have we said that, though, when we do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But not no, that I want it's to gonna top it. It's going to be a while this before is gonna be April good. Fool's Day is a Friday yeah. again. So yeah. we'll have time. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. The question is, ourselves. what are we going to prompt Bev on her Rev with Bev oh next time? Oh. Oh. <laughs> I, I will lay awake the tonight thinking about that. Be like, no, not that. Not that. That's not just good not, enough. Not just good not enough actual Bev. hemorrhoids, please. <laughs> <laughs> I think Candace needs to get into beat poetry. I yes! Think, mm, oh. <laughs> I think some original recitations oh, from Candace would be... <laughs> pretty awesome i think all the ladies aid brigade like there should be a there should be a poetry slam at the church <laughs> hey our christmas poetry slam this year could be a bradbury inspired christmas Not poetry slam we are oh due God. for some fresh poems <laughs> yes we are <laughs> until we're like we don't have time just re just re, <laughs> just re broadcast it holidays right. are brutal it's a tradition <laughs> yeah it's like charlie mountain christmas and uh rudolph and all the That's rankin right. bass movies hey at least for 2021 we did a remake mastered edition so with an additional poem on the end of it <laughs> oh so i just had a crazy idea oh a cheese ball yeah cheese ball of creativity the cheese, ball. The mm -hmm. cheese ball of creativity which has shrunk after this a great deal so <laughs> i think i need Burned to go into print like improv of... or something yeah uh -huh. yes. um what if we did like Anthems of Zion Radio Theater, like Quilter's Circle every quarter or something, <laughs> like real life. Look, here, okay, here's Radio a question. Theater. Would you stick with the character you have developed or would you flip it up? What would you do as like the writer of these? <laughs> writer well, slash director. You know, I mean, probably from a creative mm -hmm. standpoint, sticking you in your same personas and then expanding that repertoire mm -hmm. yeah. would, from a writing standpoint is stinking fun. Though at the same time, you know, it takes on a whole new shape if you voice different. I, I'd probably keep you in the same parts because you Thank like you. I only one. have a limited number of voices. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> I don't think I could do. I don't think I could do a Scheinberg or a Aaron's Scheinberg Candace. is perfect. <laughs> yeah. like that is literally how her <laughs> mm -hmm. voice is oh. in my head. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it is so good. It's perfection. The tempo, oh. the tone, and just just the it's color amazing. when you're yeah. like, get off face. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, because Aaron would say that also. Uh, yes, and, yeah. and with absolutely no nuance mm -hmm. either. Like, no. absolutely not. <laughs> Which oh, is ironic listeners. because Aaron is the one of us who has the healthiest relationship with social media. It's true. Oh, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I must point out, though, we have some wonderful creativity in this group and so far as when the Lutheran Ladies Luge <laughs> hosts came on the air for real in this episode, your beloved hosts composed their own responses to all of those questions. Mm -hmm. And I got to hear them for the first time while we were recording. That was we were, amazing. That was dying. fun. That was fun. <laughs> Never in my life did I think I would ever have to Google longest cheese names. <laughs> Legitimate cheese. It is legitimate cheese. Yes, that is I amazing. It. it was like on cheese. cheesenames.com or some <laughs> stupid thing like that. I suppose. When I was practicing aloud last night and I got to the, you know, why are you named after a cheese? My husband just buries his face in his hands and he's laughing. <laughs> I hope he listens to the answer. Yeah, You're going to have to tape his reaction or something. <laughs> I will. I will. Yeah. Sorry, you were about to say something. I about. should probably take this moment to apologize to any listeners out there in the Chicagoland area. It's nothing personal. <laughs> Y'all can come up, visit me in Michigan anytime you like. <laughs> And I should follow that up with an apology to anyone who lives in, in NOLA. Because I, I can say and that was improv. I had not written that. Sorry. Also, while my relationship with my parents isn't perfect, they did not disown me. Yeah. Because you're a freshwater fisherman. Correct. But, but you do ship them a fish in a box. I don't do that either. Also, I've never fished in the Mississippi River. As often the threatened to use fish amazing. as a weapon. Though. I do. So live that trout. Is not actually yeah. so out of character. I feel, I, yeah, that yep. should really be a mainstay at every synodical uh -huh. convention. Is a live trout. When, <laughs> when someone's talking for too long, I just come in and I'm like, 
psh, psh, get off. <laughs> so we need a parliamentarian and a fish slapper. Correct. Yep. <laughs> Although I must on. say one part of our real life presentation that is absolutely legit. Aaron eats an unreasonable amount of sardines. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that part was 100% true. <laughs> I was contemplating what I could talk about. I'm like, oh, just... That one, you can just lean into the truth. <laughs> I was trying so hard to think of a middle question to ask you, but I was so like picturing all the sardines and I got lost. <laughs> so great. Oh, yum. I, I love sardines. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. I hurt from laughing, guys. <laughs> uh, my, yeah. my, the sides of my mouth hurt from trying to not like I know. while laughing. I heard, I heard from trying not to laugh while we were supposed to be like not laughing. We've learned the, the art of silent laughter so that yeah. whew, the mic doesn't pick You're it up. You're still going to pick up me being like, <laughs> <laughs> if you hear a high pitched hum, that was me. <laughs> I think I got a couple oh in there. Oh my gosh. Oh, and Katie, your netty voice. Oh my goodness. <gasps> I am in oh, fashion. Oh because that was and you did hold it even if you needed an occasional reset that was very oh, beautiful impressive. artistic brilliance oh, yes. there. it you. was amazing except for when I, we had to re-record because I bled into Bev's I mean. voice <laughs> <laughs> I think we were passing it back and forth honestly because <laughs> well, I was actually not watching you guys through a lot of that because I had my eyes on what we were supposed to be saying as a result I being virtually connected to you only heard Nettie for most of it, and I kept forgetting she was a creation. And I kept falling in love with her a little bit and uh, wishing she was she was not a creation. So, oh, I did. That's, that's good though. That like, because now the listeners are not. Because I this is all very weird. This uh -huh. format is <laughs> all just because we've never done this before, right? Yeah. But it's very new. If listeners are like they don't know the context and they're hearing it for the first time. This is yeah. a Broadway caliber performance. If you want to go yes. hang out with these ladies a little more, just check out the Anthems of Bradbury series. The Anthems of Zion series? Yeah. Thanks for series. correcting <laughs> Sorry. I, just I like I mean, a few uh, uh, <laughs> you just like You just like <laughs> flung yourself into the deep end. <laughs> and you have to tell the tale, though. You Aww, fishy woman. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's correct. Oh, thank you for the opportunity to do this because it came out pretty quickly. When mm. I realized, when we, when we set the premise for it, I thought, okay, this is fun <laughs> yeah <laughs> and ridiculous and ridiculous yeah just i love it the best. Best. this is what happens when five creative minds come together oh, and it's just it. excellent yeah <laughs> our cheeks hurt that's what happens mm -hmm. yes cheeks <laughs> cupcakes <Yeah>. cheeks <laughs> <laughs> you went cheeks i was like <laughs> <laughs> and i i love you know, bowel jokes. <laughs> and I, I sometimes know. am highly, highly criticized for it. And that's just fine. I still think it's funny. So, of course, we have to end with a little dysentery. Yeah, right? we all have a thing. It's you fine. are a good Lutheran. Oh, my goodness. Yes, you are. Mm -hmm. You might be the best Lutheran. <laughs> our minds are set on things above and our senses of humor are set on all things earthy. We come by it, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's, hum man. it's human nature. It's a result of the fall. It's true. <laughs> I want you guys to do like I want you to record. We've got an audio book of the first, you know, House <gasps> Living Stones. I want you guys to do the audio book of the next uh, two. That would be fun. Seriously, I would do it. You guys are I would so do good. It. I would do it. I would do it. So good. Ah, oh, let's do it. Mm. Who, who at CPH do we need to talk to to get that done? Actually, I know who we need to talk to at CPH to get that. Done. Do we need to bake <laughs> cinnamon rolls for? I think is what you oh, mean. So, oh. who's making the cream cheese frosting? Aaron is, because mm -hmm. Aaron's a Aaron cook. Is. Right. Yeah. Aaron is a cook. Yeah. Aaron's going to make them fruitcake. I'm coming to Aaron's right. house. <laughs> oh, man, you make them fruitcake, they'll do anything. <laughs> that's good fruitcake. Go back and listen mm. to our fruitcake episode, everyone, because this is the best right. fruitcake I've ever eaten. Plug that in. Do yes. any of you make a lamb cake for Easter? I never have. I just I live vicariously through Candace. <sighs> no. Has anybody made a lamb I've cake? I've not made one. I don't one. have one of those tins. I right. My oh. mom always made a bunny cake Aww. instead, oh. which you don't need a special tin for, just a round cake pan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In different places. Shapes, so. I don't mm. believe yeah. in extraneous kitchen gadgets that you only use for <laughs> one thing. That's true. 
you must have moved recently. Yeah, I, I'm, I think it's just a principle moved, that she has. Perpetually. Three moves in three years. And that's, you know, yeah. I did buy a hand mixer recently so I can make meringue. Ooh, that was it. Nice. It was a big, big purchase for me. But no, I don't have a Hashtag lamb cake tin. I usually just uh, buy some tin? pre-made whipped cream. and No, I whip, I whip my own cream with my hand mixer. Cut up some angel food cake, strawberries, start layering, make a nice parfait, call it good. Well, and let's be honest, you serve actual lamb. Why mm-hmm. have a lamb cake? That's true. true. You don't need this faux yeah. dessert. <laughs> As an Seems editor, I like to get rid of unnecessary redundancy. So exactly. there we yeah. go. That's an, yeah, that is an, a, an efficient meal. And the climax is at the right time. <laughs> it's so on for you, Rachel. Yeah. Very on yeah. Point. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> okay ladies we are having way too much fun and if we keep mm. going like this it's mm. going to be a two hour podcast and we could do true. that mm-hmm. so easily so I'm going to wrap this up now Okay. if you love the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast and the Lutheran Ladies Aid Brigade <laughs> although this is this is a, a maybe a once in a lifetime podcast we'll see maybe we'll see I'll see Maybe there'll be more creative cheese balls down the road. (laughs) (laughs) You can join our group on Facebook. Tell us what you think. Did you love our April Fool's Day episode? Were you fooled? Did you actually think you were in Bradbury? Maybe. I hope so. You weren't actually in there. Mm-hmm. Join our group on Facebook, the Lutheran Ladies Lounge. You can also follow us on Instagram at Lutheran Ladies Lounge. Share your content with us there as well. You can find all of our podcasts at kfuo.org slash Lutheran Ladies Lounge or on your favorite podcasting app or on the KFUO radio app. You can also join our e-newsletter if you like getting the Lutheran Ladies Lounge in your email, or if you aren't on social media and you'd prefer to interact with us via email, you can do that as well. You can find out how to do that in the show notes for this episode, or you can email lutheranladies at kfuo.org. Also, if you want to hear more from Candace, Nettie, Bev, and Mrs. Scheinberg, who you heard today, you can subscribe to the print edition of the Lutheran Witness magazine at witness.lcms.org slash Bradbury, that's B-R-A-D-B-U-R-Y, for new continuing stories from Bradbury every month. Katie, thank you so much for writing this for us and for driving down here to join us in the studio. This has been like epic upon epicness. Oh, so. total joy for me. Thank you. I adore you guys. Uh, you're listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge Podcast Aid Brigade. <laughs> I'm Sarah slash Rebecca. I'm Aaron. I'm Brev. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Rachel. Unless, of course, I'm Candace. <laughs> <laughs> And Nettie was kicked out of the studio (laughs) for saying Kegel. (laughs) Oh, my word. This episode was written by Katie Sherman and is a work of fiction. Names, characters, businesses, places, events, and songs are either products of the author's imagination or are used in a fictitious manner. Any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, or actual events or places or works of art is coincidental. Inspired by the Anthems of Zion book series, copyright Katie Sherman, published by Concordia Publishing House, all rights reserved. Visit cph.org. To order titles in this series, please contact Concordia Publishing House at 800-325-3040 or visit them online at cph.org. To find these books and more from Katie Schuerman, visit katieschuerman.com. That's K-A-T-I-E-S-C-H-U-E-R-M-A-N-N.com. KFUO Radio and the Lutheran Ladies Lounge Podcast are underwritten in part by Ad Crusom. Visit them online at adcrucem dot com. Views and opinions expressed on the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast may not represent the official position of the management or ownership of KFUO Radio, the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. The Lutheran Ladies Lounge is produced by KFUO Radio and available at kfuo dot org or wherever you get your podcasts. Join our community on Facebook in the Lutheran Ladies Lounge. Whenever, whenever anyone asks. You're doing great. (laughs) So much words. A white or green cloth would be ideal for highlighting the yellows and pinks of the Easter.
Why can't I say this? You got this. You got this. <laughs> yes. Yellow baby buggy bumpers. I did Forsythia just fine, you guys. It was you did. Yeah. Oh, no. Forsythia was five stars oh, on Yelp. Yeah. <laughs> no, me neither. Everyone should simply get off Facebook and Instagram and Snap. Pa- <laughs> <laughs> okay everyone should simply get off facebook and instagram and say that what hold on sorry ladies can you do that again i went i went very bev there <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah sorry <laughs> that was so good i feel like i'm going in and out of netty too it's <laughs> fine <laughs> I'm sorry, would you do that again? Yes. Oh, my word. Uh, Cheers. Cheers to the bread burians. You guys were amazing. Are you exhausted? Yes. Yes, man. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. (laughs) It's good.